So hi, hello, very good afternoon, everyone. Once again, welcome back to the session. This is your mentor, Kapilan. So in this session, we'll be seeing the complete uh, topic talks. So under logical reasoning, talks is one inevitable topic which we really need to concentrate. So definitely a mark scoring part as well. So definitely, if you have some sound knowledge and if you know all the basic things. Uh, about uh, clock reasoning definitely at the time of your exams it will really help you to boost up your marks so before getting into the session let me quickly introduce about myself my name is Kapilan I'm a mechanical engineer with three years of teaching experience in the field of management exams and I've also converted various Indian Institute of Management and also most importantly if you do like my session kindly don't forget to follow me on an academy learning app which I provided the link in the description. You can kindly follow that and see all my special class videos as well. Okay. And uh, most importantly, don't forget to join us on social media platforms, and Academy, Cap for MBA, and also our Telegram channel. So talking about the subscription part, and Academy plus subscription. It, you know, you can use my discount code of KBI10 where you will be getting up to 10% off. That is for one year if you are taking an academy plus subscription, it will be for 14,750 and for two years it's going to be 18,900. Any, any of you interested in taking any of the subscriptions for one year, two years or six months, whatever the tenure may be, you can use my discount code and get absolute 10% off and only last few days are left to enjoy the 10% discount and uh, you know, if you're really interested, you can subscribe today and keep learning. So, Unacademy provides you the weekly scholarship test. That is the Unacademy Combat Challenge, where the next test is going to happen on the 21st of Feb, the time exactly at 12 p.m. So, we can start registering now for free by using the unlock code KABI10 to win exciting scholarships up to 28 lakhs. Okay. So if you take part in the session and if you're top 100 out of the competitors, definitely you can see uh, you know, yourself standing in the All India Live Leader Board. And most importantly, the questions will be curated by the experts. And also you can literally identify and improve your weak areas through the detailed solutions that we provide. Okay. So definitely it's going to be an eye opener for everybody. You can start registering now and apply for the Unacademy Weekly Scholarship Test. Right, and here we have the testimonials for CAT 2020 with absolute 99 percentile flying colors. And if you really wish to, or if you aspire to be one for the next year CAT 2021, you can start enrolling in our patches, which are kick started on 19th of Feb. It's going to be for the final revision batch for MACD, and for 22nd of Feb, it's the striker batch for CAT 2022, 21, sorry, and for 23rd of Feb. It is the quantitative genius bar for CAT 2021. Okay. So we have these many batches which are starting. And if you're really flexible with any of the batches, you can start enrolling now just by using my discount code of KABI10. Okay. So with that, let me just quickly take you to the topic for today that is clocks. So, guys, when it comes to clocks, getting from the uh, layman's view or uh, getting down from the layman's view definitely we need to know a lot more things about the reasoning questions based on clocks right so hi 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 welcome to the session very good afternoon yes hi everyone uh, so let's get started with clocks so most importantly what we need to remember so when we take clocks most of the questions from clocks reasoning will be towards the analog clock. So we have two types of clocks. One is the digital and in the analog. So, so when it comes to the analog clock, right? So first of all, let's say this is my analog clock. Right? If you take an analog clock, you'll be having three hands, right? So we'll be having the first one hour hand, second minute hand, and the third one it's gonna be the seconds hand, right? So let's say you 
let's say this is the minute hand this is the hour hand and this is the seconds hand okay so the time exactly displays here is three o'clock fine so first of all what we need to remember here we know the fact that if i ask you a question when it comes to our hand our hand if it wants to complete a 360 degree rotation okay listen carefully our hand if it wants to complete a 360 degree rotation how much time it will take for an hour hand to complete one 360 degree rotation so let's say if the hour hand it starts at 12 and if it wants to complete one 360 degree rotation it would exactly take one hour right if i'm not wrong that is so when it comes to the hour hand so here it is let's say at three let's say the hour hand is at three and if it wants to complete one 360 degree rotation and if it wants to come back again to three it would take 12 hours right it would take 12 hours for our hand to complete one 360 degree rotation and like in the same way if you go for the minute hand if it wants to complete one 360 degree rotation let's say if it starts at 12 and if it again come back to 12 this would exactly take 16 minutes right 16 minutes that is one hour to complete one 360 degree revolution and for the second hand if it wants to complete one 360 degree uh, you know rotation this would take 60 seconds right if i'm not wrong so now with that constraint what i can simply do i know the fact that if it wants to complete one 360 degree rotation this would take 12 hours so if i ask you if it is a case for our hand In 12 hours, it completes 360 degree means in one hour, in one hour, how much degrees it would have traced out? Okay, listen carefully. This is my question. If the hour hand completes 360 degree in, one, in 12 hours means in one hour, the hour hand will trace. It's going to be 360 degree by 12 if you do. This would trace exactly. 30 degree very important to remember that is in one hour our hand will trace 30 degrees like in the same way when it comes to the minute hand if in 16 minutes if it traces 360 degree then in one minute the minute hand will trace 360 degree by 60 if you do this would trace degrees very very important and the next important thing is when it comes to the second hand in 60 seconds if it traces 360 degrees then in one second the minute sorry the second hand will trace 360 degree by 60 if you do this would be six degrees so very important to remember guys listen very carefully so when it comes to a hour hand, minute hand, second hand, in one hour, hour hand will trace 30 degrees. In one minute, minute hand will trace 6 degrees. And in one second, second hand will trace 6 degrees. So with respect to degrees, we have got the distribution for the hours, minutes and second hand. Okay. Very important to remember. So definitely they will be asking you in any of the, you know, exams, uh, you know, Let's say they will ask you in three hours how much degrees a hour hand trace. If that is the case, then undoubtedly, if in one hour the hour hand traces 30 degree, in three hours the hour hand will trace 90 degrees. That's it. So we can go for the logarithmic you know, calculations. Okay. So very important. And uh, with that, let me ask you one more question, which is a very ultra famous question that used to be there in all the interview questions also. In all the interview questions in any of your campus placements also they'll be asking you this uh, if i ask you in a day how many times the minute hand 
and the horn had point sides. Okay, listen very carefully. This is my question ultimately. That is, in a day, how many times the minute hand and the horn hand it points at? If that happens to be my question, and if, if any of you can give me the right answer for this, come on. What could be the right option for this one, guys? Come on. Again, let me take you to a analog clock. Okay. So what is this term point size? Point size means one on one above the other, right? So they are asking you in a day that is in 24 hours. We know the fact that a day has 24 hours. So in a day, how many times exactly the minute hand or hand it comes one above the other? It coincides. That's the question. Come on. What possibly could be the right answer for this one, guys? Come on. So listen carefully, most of you will be in a confused state whether it will be 24 times or 23 times or 26 times. So most of you would have got answers to be if you are not very certain about the answer, you would have thought it will be 24 times because you will be having a you know assumption that every hour the minute hour and hour hand will coincide so definitely it will be 20 for 24 hours it will be 24 times so 24 times is absolutely the wrong answer why because if you see listen very carefully it is 1 2 4 5 7 8 10 and 11 so listen very carefully guys let's say initially my hour hand and minute hand exactly at 12 Okay, exactly at 12. This is one time I should be counted. Okay. And most importantly, if I ask you if it is for the next hour, if it is for the next hour, that is between 12 to 1, whether the minute hand and hour hand will coincide. If I ask you that is between 12 to 1 in any of the time, whether the minute hand and hour hand will coincide, definitely not. The next coincide will happen not exactly at 1 p one o'clock, not exactly at 1 o'clock. Why? Because if it is 1 o'clock, no, then definitely listen carefully. I'm talking about the next coincidence happen. So when it comes to the next coincidence, it will not be exactly at 1.5. Is that right? It will not be exactly at 1.5. Why? Because the minute hand has already traced 5 minutes from 12. Right? So the next coincidence will happen somewhere between 1 and 2. It will be not exactly at 1.5. It will be somewhere around 1.6 or 1.5 for the fraction of something. Not exactly at 1.5 the next coincidence will happen. Why? Because the minute hand has traced 5 minutes. So the hour hand will be slightly tilted towards 2. Like in the same way, if you go for the next coincidence, then this, that is from 2 to 3, it will not be exactly at 2.10. It will be slightly 2.11 or 2.12, something like that. Okay, why because the minute hand it has traced 10 minutes from 12. Which means in that way the hour hand will be slightly tilted towards 3. Okay, did you get my point actually guys? Yeah, so if you could remember this then definitely what is the real fact which you need, which you need to remember here now? So when it comes to one 360 degree rotation that is for in 12 hours of a hour hand. 
it is from 11 to 1 so it is very clear that from 1 to 2 one coincidence will happen 2 to 3 one coincidence 3 to 4 one coincidence somewhere between 4 to 5 1 5 to 6 1 6 to 7 1 7 to 8 1 9 to 10 1 10 to 11 1 and 11 to 12 no 10 to 11 1 and listen very carefully in a time span of 2 hours that is from 11 to 1 from 11 to 1 only one coincidence will happen only between 11 to 12 and 12 to 1 only one time the coincidence happens and the time is exactly at 12, 12 o'clock that's it okay so what we really need to remember in 12 hours 11 times it coincides so in 24 hours ideally it's going to be 22 times there will be a coincidence of the minute hand and the hour hand that's it very simple okay you're getting this guys so very famous question that we really need to understand okay if they ask you in a day how many times the minute hand and hour hand coincides undoubtedly it's going to be 22 times okay that means in 12 hours 11 times it coincides so there is a compensation between 11 to 1 only one time the coincidence happens so that will be the same for same way for the second rotation as well okay so in 24 hours it's going to be 22 times okay ultimately very important to remember okay so with that let me straightly take you to the very first question of today's session. So a clock is set right at 5 a.m. Okay, listen. And it is given that the clock loses 16 minutes in every 24 hours. Okay, in every 24 hours, it loses 16 minutes. What will be the true time when the clock indicates 10 p.m. on 4th day? Very, very important. So how to solve this guys i just want you guys to try this first and then let me know let me do the solution later come on So what we can do exactly here so we know the fact that the clock is set set right at 5 a.m and right from 5 a.m <clears throat> when the time indicates the clock indicates 10 p.m on fourth day if you try to travel to the fourth day fourth day 10 p.m right listen carefully first of all if it is 5 a.m what it will be for 10 p.m so if you try to count it 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so half you know 7 hours for 12 12 p.m right and then How much hours are there in between? So 7 plus 
10 you do it will be 17 17 hours for the you know first day and uh, it's going to be 24 hours for the second day 24 hours for the third day and fourth day till 10 pm right so if that is the case it's going to be Twenty two hours, right? From twelve AM to ten PM, right? It will be twenty two hours. Right? So the total number of durations if you try to count it. So from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. on fourth day. That is the time from 5 a.m. on a day to 10 p.m. on fourth day. That is the 5 a.m. on the first day to 10 p.m. on the fourth day. If you do, it will be exactly 89 hours. You be given. right. You'll be having a time uh, duration of 89 hours, right? So I've given you the lead. Come on, go for it. What you can do exactly from this? So what you can exactly do? I know the fact that the clock loses 16 minutes in 24 hours. So in every 24 hours, the clock loses 16 minutes. So if that is the case, then I can say now in 23 hours, 44 minutes. If you try to subtract the 16 minutes from 24 hours, so this 23 hours, 44 minutes in this clock, in this clock will be equal to 24 hours in a correct clock a normal working clock right so if that is the case then 80 you know uh, if you try to break this out let me convert this 44 minutes also in hours so if you try to do this you'll be getting 23 44 by 60 so this would be 356 by 15 hours that is 356 by 15 hours in this clock is equal to 24 hours in normal clock right so if that is the case then what will be the case for 89 hours so 89 hours in this clock will be 24 and 2 if we bring this uh to 356 by 15 to the right hand side it will become 15 by 356 into 18. so if we try to do this Simplification, this will exactly give you 90 hours in a correct clock, in a normal working clock. So which means what we really need to understand, 89 hours in the in this faulty clock is actually 90 hours in the correct clock. So if that is the case, then definitely 
If it indicates 10 p.m. on the fourth day, you need to add one hour extra. So answer it's going to be option A. The true time when the clock displays, displays 10 p.m. it will be the true time will be 11 p.m. Okay, will you get this, guys? Yeah. I hope you guys are clear with this. Yes. Kindly give me a thumbs up if you're really clear with this. Come on. Yeah, let's go for the next question then. Come on. So here in this question, they are asking you at what time between 4 and 5 o'clock will the hands of a watch time in opposite direction. So very important. So what you can exactly do here. So if you really want to find the time exactly, first of all. If the hands, that is both the minute hand and hour hand, that are in opposite direction. So this is actually the concept of opposite direction. So if you really want to find this, first of all, we just want to know the formula to find the degree actually. So what we can do, theta is equal to modulus of the universal formula to find the degree between the given time. It is 30h minus 11 by 2m. It is the modulus of 30h minus 11 by 2m. So here what we can do, if both the angles are in opposite direction, that is if both the minute hand and hour hand are in opposite direction, let's say, if the minute, you know, hour hand is here and if the minute hand is here, what is the degree between them? It is 180. So for the place of theta, we need to substitute 180 degree. So it's 180 modulus of 30, you know, into hour. You need to go for the lesser hour. That is 404 minus 11 by 2. Yum is what we need to find. Right, the minute. So what you can do? It is 180 is equal to 120 minus 11 by 2 m. So it will be 60 plus. So what you can do exactly here, it will be 180 is equal to, if you take, uh, you know, LCM, this will be 240 minus 11 by 2 M. Or if you take modulus of it, then it would be 180 minus 120 is equal to 11 by 2 M. So it's going to be. 60 into 2 by 11 is equal to yum. So yum is actually 120 by 11. So if you try to divide 120 by 11, this would go 1, 11, 1, 0. So it's going to be 1, 10 by 11. So the minute is 1, 10 by 11 and the time is
So what we can do? We can apply, uh, you know, the concept of You know, just by using the formula method, or I'll tell you the smart way of doing it. If it is between four to five, if I want to find it, what you can simply do, if they are asking you to find, uh, you know, if they are in opposite direction, what you need to simply do is that, no, you need to take the uh, lesser or four, and you need to see the number which is straight opposite to four. Straight. So the number which is straight opposite to four, it is 10. So with this 10, you need to multiply five into five. So if you do so, you'll be getting, 50, 50 by 11. That's it. Okay. So 50 by 11. If you try to divide 50 by 11, this will go exactly 4, 44 and 6. So try to add 4 with this 50. So it's going to be 54, 6 by 11. So the time exactly is 4, 54, 6 by 11. So kindly remember guys, if they are asking you in opposite direction, you need to take a number which is opposite to 4. That is 10. With this, you need to multiply into 5. So you'll be getting 50 and write this 50, 50 by 11. If you try to sort out this one, you'll be getting 4, 6 by 11. Kindly add this 4 question 4 with this 50. So you'll be getting 4, 54, 6 by 11. And the answer is going to be option D. That is 54 plus 6 by 11 past 4. That should be the right answer. Okay. Cool. Next question will go. A clock was 7 minutes behind the actual time on 3 p.m. on Wednesday and 8 minutes ahead of actual time on 4 p.m. Friday. So, in on Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So, the time when it was, you know, the time exactly when it was 7, 3 p.m., the clock was 7 minutes behind. Okay, the clock was 7 minutes behind when the time is exactly at 4 p.m. on Friday, the clock was 8 minutes ahead. So it was 7 minutes behind. And at 4 p.m. it was 8 minutes ahead. Right? So when will it show the correct time? That's your question. So very important question. So listen carefully guys. Uh, if, you, if you try to see this, the clock was 7 minutes late at 3 p.m. on Wednesday and 8 minutes fast at 4 p.m. on Friday. So if you really want to see how much is the clock has gained, okay, how much is the clock has gained, that is it has gained 15 minutes in 9. Right, that is from Wednesday after 3 p.m. plus 24 hours complete, this complete 24 hours for the Thursday plus this 16. Right, if it is. See, listen carefully from 3 p.m. Uh, to you know, 12 a.m. If you try to count it, it will be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it would be exactly 9 hours. And from 12 a.m. to 4 p.m. 12 a.m. to 4 p.m. This is exactly 16 hours. So if you try to see this, it is exactly 9 plus 24, it is 33, 33 plus 16, it is 49. So over a time span of 49 hours, right? So uh, 19 minutes, that is actually 7 plus 8. 7 plus 8, if you try to count, it is 15 minutes, right? So what you need to really understand, the clock has gained, it has gained, 15 minutes in 49 hours. Is that right? Is that right everyone? Right. So in 7 minutes will be gained in what you need to simply see. So 7 minutes 
will be gained in that's equal 49 into if we try to convert this minutes into watts it's going to be 420 by 900 right if you try to do this this would give you exactly Twenty-two point eight six hours, right? So we have zero point six hours. That is equal to zero point eight six into sixty. If you try to convert this into minute, this will be exactly fifty-one minutes, right? So that the clock will show the correct time at near about one p one. Right, it should be 1.51 p.m. on Thursday, that's it. Very simple. Okay. So I hope this one helped you. So definitely what you really need to remember, you need to first see how much is being gained in over how much, how much hours. That is, 15 minutes is gained in 49 hours. Right. So if that is the case, then 7 minutes will be gained in 22.86 hours. Right. So exactly, then 0.6 hours will be gained in 51 minutes. So the time exactly at 11, 11, 51 p.m. on Thursday. It will show the correct time. That's it. Okay. All good. Let's go for the next one. Try to address this question, guys. Come on. So the next question if you see a wall clock closes 10 minutes every one hour okay and in 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 one hour by the wall clock a table clock gets 10 minutes ahead of it okay and in one hour by the table clock an alarm clock falls five minutes behind it and in one hour of the alarm clock a wristwatch gets five minutes ahead of it okay and at noon all four time pieces were set correctly Fine, all good. To the nearest minutes, what time will the wristwatch show when the correct time is 6 p.m. on the same day? So listen carefully, let's try to do this question. First of all, if you try to take for every hour, every hour, first let me take the table clock. So I know the fact that a table clock gets 10 minutes ahead of it, ahead of, you know, um, a wall clock. So table clock is actually, so from the very first statement, I can, I can say that 
if i simply try to sub subtract table clock minus wall clock that would give me exactly plus 10 minutes that is 10 minutes ahead of it right so it will exactly give you plus 10 minutes so if that is the case then it would be if it is plus 10 minutes for you know one hour then it's going to be one hour in every six six hours is that clear so if it gains 10 minutes in one hour then it would gain one hour in six hours okay then in six hours it would gain one hour that's what the thing is all about so second if you go that is from that is between alarm clock and table clock so if you see alarm clock minus table clock if you do is not table clock yeah alarm clock minus table clock they have clearly given you that it falls five minutes behind so if it falls five minutes behind means it should be minus five minutes if that is the case you know it, it, it loses five minutes in every hour means definitely this will be losing minus 30 minutes in six hours if i'm not wrong like in the same way if you go for the next one that is the wristwatch so the wristwatch minus the alarm clock if you do they've clearly said in one hour a wristwatch get five minutes ahead of it so it should be plus five minutes so if it is plus five minutes means it is exactly plus 30 minutes in six hours this would gain 30 minutes in six hours and they have clearly said also every hour the wall clock the wall clock closes 10 minutes right so if it's six hours if it is six hours since 12 noon then the time shown by wall clock will be let's say from from 12 noon if i try to you know calculate if i try to calculate that is from 12 am the time shown if it if it is six hours from then that is i uh, you know the wall clock would have displayed six minus one 5 pm it will not be displaying after six hours it will not be displaying displaying you 6 pm it will be displaying you 5 pm right so the time shown by you know table clock with reference to wall clock right listen carefully the time shown by table clock with reference to wall clock it will be what it is already 5 pm so with this 5 pm if you try to add 15 minutes this will be exactly 5 15 pm okay this is what the time shown by the table clock with reference to wall clock and the time shown by you know shown by alarm clock with respect to table clock if you see that is the time shown by alarm with reference to wall clock this will be with this 5 50 pm if you try to you know subtract 25 minutes then it would be exactly 5 21 pm right so the time shown by the wristwatch that is from 5 21 if you try to add 25 minutes plus 21 by 6 this would exactly give you 5 47 pm that's it so the time exactly the wristwatch shows when the correct time is 6 pm it will be 5 47 pm that's it. okay clear guys
Yang Go for the next question so it's going to be option one for this yeah and the next one on the planet oz there are eight days in a week sunday to saturday and another day called oc day there are 60 36 hours in a day and each hour has 90 minutes while each minute has 60 seconds as on earth the hour hand covers the time twice every day find the approximate angle between the hands of a clock oz when the time is 12 40 am okay so for a hour hand if you see if you try to see for a hour hand so for a hour hand uh, given on oz planet one day is 36 hours right and the hour hand covers the dial twice every day so the dial covers here it is 80 north in one complete rotation right so it's going to be for one rotation it is nothing but 36 hours by 2 twice it covers so it's going to be 80 80 north in one complete round and as on one complete angle in the clock dial is 360 so in one hour if you try to see in one hour the hour hand will trace 360 by 80 if you do this will be exactly 20 degrees right so for 12 hours the hour hand moves so for 12 hours the hour hand moves 12 into 20 degrees if you do it will be 240 degree right so given there are you know they, they it is given that in one hour you have 90 minutes and and for one minute if you try to see our hand moves in one minute the our hand moves 20 by 90 degree if you do so that's for 40 minutes it's going to be 20 by 90 into 40 so 0 0 goes out you will be getting exactly 8.88 degrees Right. in 40 minutes it moves 8.88 degrees so for 1240 the hour hand moves for 12 it's going to be 240 plus uh, 40 it's going to be 88.88 88. so at 1240 it's going to be 248.88 degrees then if you come to the minute hand for minute hand similarly if you do for the minute hand now minute hand moves 90 minutes to complete one hour right so in one hour it is 90 minutes for the minute hands. that's one minute that's one minute it moves 360 by 90 if you do this will be exactly 4 degrees so for 40 minutes if you do it's gonna be 4 into 40 it will give you 160 so the angle between the hour hand and the minute hand at 12.40 am that's going to be 248.88 minus 160 if you do this would give you exactly 88.88 degrees so approximately you can take it to 89 degrees so the answer is going to be option C when the time is exactly at 12.40 pm it's going to be 89 degrees approximately between the merit hand and the or hand. That's very simple. Is that clear, guys? Everyone, yes. So the continuation of this session, we'll see it in the next.